If you're a Canadian, if you're an American, you do not have a right to your next breath of air. If you're an American, if you're a Canadian, you do not have a right to a drink of clean water. You have no right to prevent toxic chemicals from entering your body. In fact, your body right now contains about a pound of plastic and traces of 700 toxic chemicals. And North American law gives you no standing to take legal action about any of this. And this is very odd. There are 193 countries in the United Nations, and in 177 of them, people have a legal right to a healthy environment. In many of those countries, Mother Nature herself has legal rights. In Ecuador, the rights of Mother Earth are guaranteed in the Constitution. Uh, a constitutional right means that it's the highest or supreme law of the land. It enjoys the highest level of legal protection possible in these legal systems. And it's also something deeper and more profound. It's a reflection of society's uh, most cherished and deeply held values. So it re reflects uh, a real emergence of consciousness over the past four decades. In Green Rights, the film that my colleagues and I are making, you'll meet the people who are using those rights to serve the planet. You'll meet M.C. Mehta, the Indian lawyer whose courtroom battles against air pollution save 4,000 lives a year and have stopped the deterioration of the Taj Mahal. You'll meet Beatriz Mendoza of Argentina, who sued both government and industry and won a multi-billion dollar cleanup of the polluted river basin where she lives. You'll meet Maud Barlow, author of three books on water, arguing not only that humans have a right to water, but that water itself has rights as well. We got the United Nations to recognize the human right to water and sanitation, which was a <clears throat> two-decade fight. <laughs> we must have to start making our laws more compatible with the laws of nature. What rights do nature have? What rights do water have? What rights do, does a watershed have? Uh, outside of its usefulness to us. You'll meet Antonio Oposa, the lawyer who sued the Philippine government on behalf of his children and won a ban on old growth logging and a cleanup of Manila Bay. You'll meet former French President Jacques Chirac, whose 2004 environmental charter led, seven years later, to a nationwide ban on fracking. You'll meet Ada Lockridge and Ron Plain of the Nam Junong First Nation in Sarnia, whose trailblazing lawsuit alleges that the right to life, which is guaranteed in Canada's Charter of Rights, logically includes environmental rights, which makes Ontario's lax regulation of corporate pollution illegal. We put stiffer regulations on used cars than we do on oil refineries. If I'm to sell you my car now, it has to pass an emissions test. I can buy a refinery and all of the certificates of approval are grandfathered with that. You'll hear an all-new piece of music, Earth, Our Home, by renowned composer Scott McMillan. You should have the right to breathe clean air and drink clean water. Mother Nature, the source of all life, should have the right to be treated with respect and reverence. Here's Chief Chu Akagi of the Passamaquoddy. Let's get back to calling her a mother. And the idea that the native would tell you is that nobody would harm their mother. You don't hurt your mother. And if your mother nourishes and nurtures you and supplies you with all these things, you should appreciate that. In our film, you'll meet Dr. John Burroughs, who teaches law at the University of Minnesota and is also deeply rooted in the indigenous law of his Anishinaabe ancestors. If we could see living with the earth in that way, that is, yes, there's constraints that come when we recognize that the earth has rights, but those same constraints provide, provide a discipline for us that allows the earth to grow, but also us to grow in new ways I think that uh, there's so much that we can benefit from with that. Embedding environmental rights in our legal systems is the most important single thing we could do to help the Earth. Those rights would affect everything. Biodiversity, endangered species, pollution of the air and water, the integrity of our food, you name it. Several organizations and many individuals are working to entrench environmental rights in the legal structures of Canada and the United States. We at The Green Interview are supporting this movement by producing a featured documentary that will be available for distribution to audiences across the continent and around the world. Anywhere, anytime that people want to learn more about what they don't have 
and what they could have. Will you help us make the film? It's easy to donate. Simply go to www.greenrights.com and click on the donate button and follow the prompts. Will you do it right now? For the Earth and for the rights of nature, I'm Silver Donald Cameron, host of thegreeninterview.com. Thanks so much for your support. Green Rights is a project of thegreeninterview.com. Visit us today at thegreeninterview.com. The world's biggest issues, the world's finest minds.